how do humans, or to say homo family, differs from other species? Know thyself. A sign above the entrance at Delphi's Oracle Temple seemed to be captivating. What does it mean to know oneself? Does knowing your mere existence equates to knowing yourself? Or where you belong as a being? Or knowing your true self and how others perceive you counts? In 1970, Gallup conducted a test, a mirror test, to know if chimpanzees and monkeys are aware of themselves as they are. The tests have shown that monkeys cannot recognize themselves, contrary to the result, where chimpanzees have passed it. Using the mirror as just a guide without touching it to locate the water-based mark on their face. However, consecutive tests not limited to homo species succeeded. The same as with Gallup's early tests, animals such as dolphins, elephant, and other monkeys excluded of Gallup's initial test have passed it. In addition, pigs have also passed the mirror test. And lastly, the one who surpassed the passing mark, magpies. Not peculiar to us homo family or humans. Now, let's talk about multiple intelligence. But first, what is multiple intelligence? Howard Gardner of Harvard has identified seven distinct intelligences. This theory has emerged from recent cognitive research and documents the extent to which students possess different kinds of minds and therefore learn, remember, perform, and understand in different ways. According to Gardner 1991, we are all able to know the world through language, logical and mathematical analyses, spatial representation, musical thinking, the use of the body to solve problems or to make things, an understanding of other individuals, and an understanding of ourselves. In the early 1980s, as a counter to the growing tyranny of IQ as a single measure of intelligence, Gardner 1983 proposed a theory of multiple intelligence. It was not possible to see if a human has evolved in a more or less fit based on the standard IQ test since it tests only one fitness relevant capacity. In one of his distinct multiple intelligences, Gardner coined the term logical mathematical intelligence which focuses on reasoning and calculating. Think conceptually and are able to see and explore patterns and relationships. They like to experiment, solve puzzles, ask comic questions. They can be thought through logic games, investigations, mysteries. They need to learn and form concepts before they can deal with details. However, all of these intelligences manifest internalized knowledge about self. And the most evident and significant difference between us, humans, and other animals, which is our level of socialization, is nowhere to be found in the list. In 1927, Thorndike used the term social intelligence to describe the fact that some academically gifted students were nonetheless failing the social side of the university life. The universities were mistakenly equating logical mathematical intelligence with success in life. Moreover, we all know that every intelligence relies on the curiosity. Curiosity is the engine that powers acquisition of knowledge in terms of social intelligence. Curiosity about the cognition of others is represented by an interest in their states and relationships, and it works on three levels. First, curiosity about physical states of others, their strengths and weaknesses and habits, or in simple terms, the kinesthetic knowledge. Second is the curiosity about the mental state of others and what they are thinking, and how this can be used as an advantage, or also known as Machiavellian knowledge. And last but not the least is the curiosity about the emotional state of others and what they are feeling, or empathy knowledge. Other than the kinesthetic and Machiavellian intelligence about others, humans also have empathy with those others. 
This empathy, however, is hard to explain in evolutionary terms because to empathize, we need to be able to feel the pain of others. Thus, according to Gardner, the implication of the theory is that learning and teaching should focus on the particular intelligences of each person. Gardner points out that different intelligences represent not only different content domains but also learning modalities. A further implication of the theory is that assessment of abilities should measure all forms of intelligence, not just linguistic and not just logical and mathematical. Accommodating others. There's a difference between tolerance of others on humans and apes. According to Hardy 2009, chimps and macaques tend to show level of imitation before their 11th week. However, humans show this trait of imitating others throughout their life. Fossey 1983 described that in a male gorilla dominated group, infanticide is possible especially on their rival's offspring. Empathy is not an evolutionary thing. According to Cheney and Seyfart, 1990, that monkeys fail to show compassion to others. All of the care they show to their offspring or to others can be said as more of innate mechanisms than conscious cognition. But this does not mean that other primates do not show empathy. Warniken and Tomasello, 2006, tested chimpanzees. They found out that human infants help even those they do not know, while chimpanzees only help those they know. Although, there are non-human empathy which are human-like. For example, Tewa'al 1997 said, Bonobos respect emotional state of others. Hashtag semicolon hashtag mental health. They also show importance to private space. That is why they build nests and even private feeding areas. Which gives meaning to other bonobos that I want to be alone. The Wa'al 1996 also described capuchin monkeys on twin cages that were selectively fed. In here, it shows that capuchin only shares to their relatives and friends and not to their enemies. Empathy is not just about understanding the needs of others, but is about attempting to meet those needs. This differs to theory of mind, where the needs are exploited rather than accommodated. Premak and Pranyak said that chimpanzees are able to model the probable future action of others based on their previous action. However, they cannot model another person modeling the beliefs of a third individual, like in the sentence, Alf thinks Betty is unhappy. This sentence is from a third person's point of view. Dunbar 2004 shows that in terms of theory of mind, chimps cannot impute motivations about motivation, unlike humans that can work at about five levels of motivation. This is a clear difference of the mental modeling between human and other primates. However, Tomasello 2008 said that the theory of mind is not enough to get us to language itself. It is cooperative sophistication and empathy, the engine of cooperation. Empathy has been subject to evolutionary pressure in the human lineage. This is true to primates who have learned to communicate, also possessed human-like communicative behavior. How did humans end up differently from chimps and bonobos? This is a problem to theories about human origins. Empathy leads to cooperation. Cooperation leads to advantages of specialization, enhanced communication, and social tolerance. But cooperation also leads to cheating, who uses knowledge for Machiavellian ends. But how did we become a highly cooperative species? Sauber and Wilson 1999 offered one solution. 
species move towards behaviors that benefit one individual. Sharing behavior acts to smooth peaks and troughs of an individual's existence. Cheating is counterproductive. Taking and not giving will only work for a while. Hence, making the evolutionary pressure towards cooperation and development to further anticipate the needs of others. Empathy acts to reduce antagonistic relationships, allowing concentrated and cooperative groups to flourish. Empathy can work to create a tyranny of commons as well as individual cooperation. That ends the presentation of group number four.